Survey of Calculus, Chapter 6, Section 1, Functions of Several Variables. A function of two variables assigns to each input pair x, y exactly one output number, f of x, y. Now that's a really fancy way of saying that you've got two independent variables, x and y, and they are going to be both put into a function and give you yet another um, output variable or dependent variable um, value. So for example, you have a profit function. P of x, y is 4x plus 6y. Find P of 25, 10. All you have to do is put in 25 for x and 10 for y. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. And here you see the process, just putting 4 and, uh, excuse me, 25 in for x and 10 for y. Gives us 100 plus 60 or $160. Here's another example. Read over it, pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, you're going to put in 10 for x and 15 for y, which gives us 65 plus 108.75, or $173.75. Here's another example. This time we have four variables. The total cost to a company in thousands of dollars is given by C of x, y, z, w equals 4x squared plus 5y plus z minus the natural log of w plus 1. Now this looks very intimidating, but notice they also give you the values for each of those variables. You put in 3 for x, 2 for y, 0 for z, and 10 for w. Pause the recording, try this problem, and resume to check your answer. So you should have gotten 43.6 thousand or $43,600. Here's another example. Um, a business purchases a piece of storage equipment that costs C1, has capacity V1, later it wishes to replace the original with a new piece of equipment that costs C2, and has capacity V2. Industrial economists have found that in such cases, the cost of the new piece of equipment can be estimated by the function of three variables. So the, um, the new cost is V2 over V1 to the 0.6 power times C1. When we switch slides, we're going to have values for V1, V2, and C1. So you may want to jot this formula down, maybe pause for a second to get that done, because this is the formula you're going to be using for the numbers on the next slide. So we have 40, for $45,000, a beverage company buys a manufacturing drink, a tank, excuse me, that has a capacity of 10,000 gallons. Later, it decides to buy a tank with double the capacity, estimate the cost of the new tank. So we have the original cost, we have the original capacity, the new capacity is going to be, or the new volume is going to be double that, or 20,000. Using the formula from the previous slide, pause the recording, give this a try and resume to check your answer. And putting all our numbers into place, we get $68,207.25. Now, if you want to, go back and repeat that example and assume the company buys a tank with a capacity of 2.75 times that of the original. So you're going to take 10,000 and multiply by 2.75 to find the new capacity. And what is the percentage increase? Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. So the new cost would be $82,568.07. And the percentage is the second cost over the first minus one. Or another way of doing it is the difference in the cost over the original cost. Uh, either way you go, though, it's 83.5%. Okay, now we have another... Um, application problem. As the populations of two cities grow, the number of telephone calls between the cities increases, much like the gravitational pull will increase between two growing objects in space. The average number of cell call, uh, telephone calls per day between the cities is given by this formula, which looks very complicated, but again, they're going to give us the numbers for it. 
So D is the distance between the cities P1 and P2 or the populations. You may want to jot this formula down. Pause if you need to to do that so that you can work out the problem. So if uh, Dallas and Fort Worth are 30 miles apart and have populations of 1,213,825 and 624,067, what's the average number of calls per day between the two cities? You're going to use the formula from the previous slide, pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. So there are approximately 604,580,752 calls between the two cities. And here's one more. Using the same formula, find the average number of calls between Phoenix, Arizona and Tucson. Pause the recording, give it a try, and resume to check your answer. So approximately 24,095,597 calls per day. Now we have for f of x, y equals negative 3, find f of 5, 7, and f of negative 2, 0. Now this may seem a little confusing, but it's a constant function. f of x, y is negative 3 no matter what x and y are, so it's always going to be negative 3. I know, a little tricky. Okay, this last thing is not something that you're necessarily going to have to work with, but I do want you to understand it because as we go through this chapter, you're going to be looking at and working with three-dimensional graphs. So I do want you to have an understanding of how they work. When we have three-dimensional graphs, we have our xy plane, but that's kind of laying down. Think of it as being a room, and the xy plane would be the floor of the room. Uh, picture the corner of the room where the two uh, walls meet. You have at the floor, you have the x-axis and the y-axis. The floor itself would be the xy plane, and then rising above the floor would be your z-axis, and that would give you the third dimension. That would be space. So if you could see how that works there, you'll have three coordinates. You will count out the x-axis, whatever the x is. You will count across for the y and then up for the z, and that will give you, instead of a point on a plane, a point in space. Uh, you can see here again how that kind of works. Uh, they've drawn the cube there to show you the relationship of the point to the other axes. We were going to plot these points. Um, again, you're not going to actually have to do this. I just want you to have an understanding of how uh, graphing things in a three-dimensional plane where you don't just have length and width, but you also have depth or you have space, how that works. So if you want to kind of study how these points have been graphed, uh, go ahead and do that. And you can pause the recording and look it over. Make sure you kind of understand what's going on here and how the three-dimensional thing works. Otherwise, if you've got it, then let's just move on and finish this recording. Okay, this is the section summary. Again, really all we're doing in this section as far as actual work goes is you're, you're putting in numbers to a function and you're coming up with the answer. It's, it's very simple, uh, should not cause you a lot of problems. The biggest problem is going to be careless mistakes, so be very careful as you work through these. Okay, the rest of this is additional practice, so pause the recording as you go through these, give them a try, and resume to check your answer.